Welcome! In this series of videos, you'll learn about obesity prevalence and trends. There are three learning objectives for this series of videos. This video will cover the third learning objective, explain historical trends and the current prevalence of obesity in the United States. The most recent estimates for obesity show that over 40% of U.S. adults' weight status is classified as obese. These data come from the CDC, which conducts annual surveillance of BMI and other health markers. As you can see in the pie chart on the right, approximately 26% of U.S. adults have a BMI classified as healthy or normal weight, approximately 31% have a BMI classified as overweight, and 42% have a BMI classified as obese. This prevalence of obesity is much higher than we've seen in the past few decades. Here we see data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, which collects data on a number of health metrics for Americans. These maps are available on the CDC's website and can be found in the link referenced on the lower left-hand corner. These are data on obesity, classified as BMI at or above 30 kilograms per meter squared. For reference, this would be an individual with a height of 5 feet 4 inches who is around 30 pounds overweight. Here we can see that in 1985, less than half of states even had obesity-related data. For the most part, these states were reporting that less than 10% of adults had a BMI classified as obese, whereas approximately half reported 10-14% to of adults had BMIs classified as obese. Now we'll go through these data year by year to see how this map changes as we advance through time. You'll see the colors of states change as obesity data become available and as the prevalence of obesity changes in these states. So again, we start here in 1985, and we see some increase in 1986 in the number of states reporting obesity-related data. 1987 provides even more data from more states and some increases in the prevalence of obesity as indicated by more darker blue states. In 1988, we see more data as well as more darker blue states. 1989 shows a similar trend as well as 1990. And in 1991, we have a whole new classification with some states reporting 15 to 19% of adults with a BMI classified as obese. Now, as we advance through the 90s, we see additional darkening and additional data as we see more and more states reporting 15 to 19% and now even some states with more than 20% of adults with a BMI classified as obese. As we progress to the 2000s, we see more and more states with 20 to 24% of adults with a BMI classified as obese, and one state reporting greater than 25% of their population had a BMI classified as obese. Similar trends are seen throughout the 2000s into the 2010s. Now we'll pause here for a minute and compare 1990 to 2000 to 2010. We saw that in the 80s and early 90s, there were many states that weren't even collecting data on BMI, but that changed throughout the 2000s. The style of these maps provided by the CDC changed a little bit after 2010. So now they'll look a little different, but show similar data and information. Again, we see the states with the color of each state corresponding to the prevalence of adults who have a BMI classified as obese. Here we can see that the majority of states report that 25 to 35% of their adults have BMIs classified as obese. As we progress, we see additional increases in the prevalence of obesity. To recap the most recent data from 2020, we saw that no state or territory had prevalence of obesity less than 20%, which differs from the data we saw in the 80s and 90s. Three states and the District of Columbia had relatively lower prevalence of BMI compared to other states, but 11 had a prevalence between 25 and 30%. 20 states, Guam and Puerto Rico, had a relatively higher prevalence of obesity between 30 and 35%. And 16 states, particularly those located in the South and Midwestern regions, have prevalence of obesity of 35% or greater. Now that you're oriented to these slides and the trends that they show, 
Let's review them one more time more quickly so you can again take in these trends as well as regional differences in the prevalence of obesity. So here we are back at 1985 and let's look at these trends again. Notice that this increases as we move into the 90s and the increasing number of dark states, especially in the southern, eastern, and midwestern regions. These trends continue into the 2000s as we see more and more dark states, again, mainly concentrated in the southern, eastern, and midwestern regions. As we move into the 2010s, we see some improvements in some states that change from yellow to green, but worsening in others, especially in the southern and midwestern regions. This figure shows these trends in a different way, but reaches further back, beyond 1985, back to the 1960s. This shows us a different view of changes in overweight and obesity prevalence among U.S. men and women. Within this figure, you see that the year is represented on the x-axis, and the percent of adults with BMI classified as overweight or obese is represented on the y-axis. The solid lines are data for men, and the dotted lines are data for women. Similar colors correspond with similar metrics. So in the dark blue, we have overweight prevalence, in the green, we have obesity prevalence, and in the orange, we have severe obesity prevalence for men and women. Let's first look at trends for overweight. And here we see that prevalence of overweight is higher for men relative to women, but is actually fairly steady over time if we look at trends between the 1960s to the present day. And in fact, we actually see decreases in the prevalence of overweight among men in recent years. However, we have to look at this in the context of our other weight status classifications of obesity and severe obesity. And when we do that, we see that these trends in overweight are perhaps not as promising as they first appeared. Here in the green, we see that for both men and women, we see significant increases in the prevalence of obesity between the 1960s and present day. And here we see a particularly sharp increase between 1980 and 2000. The prevalence of obesity continues to rise in the 2000s and peaks in the most recent surveys. So here we see that this decrease in overweight is really being made up by an increase in obesity. We see a relatively lower prevalence of severe obesity in both men and women, but similar increases over time. Rates of severe obesity were relatively flat between the 1960s and 1980s, but we see a relatively steeper increase until the 2000s and a continued increase to present day. Certain groups are disproportionately affected by obesity, leading to significant sociodemographic disparities in obesity. Here's just one example of racial and ethnic disparities in obesity in the United States. This bar chart shows us prevalence of obesity in both men and women, as well as separated for men versus women and separated by race and ethnicity. The darker blue bars are prevalence of obesity for non-Hispanic white adults. The lighter blue bars are prevalence of obesity for non-Hispanic black adults. The darker green bars are prevalence of obesity for non-Hispanic Asian adults. And the lighter green bars are prevalence of obesity for adults who are Hispanic. Here, when we look at data for men and women combined, we see significant disparity in how obesity affects these racial and ethnic groups. Here we see prevalence of obesity in non-Hispanic white adults is around 42%, which is significantly lower than non-Hispanic black adults who have a prevalence of obesity of around 50%. We see a significantly lower prevalence of obesity in non-Hispanic Asian adults and a prevalence of obesity for Hispanic adults that is higher than that of non-Hispanic white adults. These trends are similar when we look at data for men and women, but we do see some differences, and in particular, we see that non-Hispanic black women have the highest prevalence of obesity. Changes in the prevalence of obesity among children aged two to 19 years has paralleled increases seen in adults. This figure presents data comparing prevalence of obesity in the 1960s through the present day, 
On the x-axis, we have the year of the assessment, and on the y-axis, we have the percent of children whose weight status was classified as obese. The light blue line represents all ages combined, and we see that in between the 1970s and 1980s, there was a slight increase in obesity, but a very stark and significant increase between the 1980s and the 2000s. Weight status for children and adolescents continues to increase into the present day. These trends are similar when we break out the data for two to five year olds in the dark blue line, six to 11 year olds in the dark green line, and 12 to 19 year olds in the light green line. This figure presents the most recent weight status data for children aged two to 19 years. The groups represented on the x-axis are both sexes combined or broken out by boys and girls. The y-axis is the percent of children with a weight status classified as obese. The dark blue bars represent data for two to 19 year olds combined, whereas the light blue bars represent data for two to five year olds. The dark green bars represents data for six to 11 year olds, and the light green bars represent data for two to 19 year olds. This figure illustrates that across all age groups and in both sexes, the prevalence of children and adolescents with a weight status classified as obese is 18.5%. The prevalence is significantly lower for two, the two to five year old group and increases as we look at six to 11 year olds and 12 to 19 year olds. It should be noted that there are also significant socio-demographic disparities in obesity among children as well. And these graphs are similar to the graphs that we've been looking at and mirror the format we saw for adults, where we have data for boys and girls combined or broken out by boys versus girls. And our different racial ethnic categories are represented in the different colors here. We see a significantly higher prevalence of obesity for non-Hispanic black children as well as for Hispanic children. Here we have data for infants aged birth to 24 months. These data span from 1971 to 2016 and show changes in the prevalence of infants with high weight for length across this time period. The dark blue bar is for both age groups combined, whereas the lighter bars are for six to 24 month olds or 12 to 24 month olds separately. As we can see, the prevalence of high weight for length has been somewhat stable across this time period, and most recent data illustrate that 8 to 10% of U.S. infants are classified as having high weight for length. Now, we know obesity increases risk for metabolic and other chronic diseases, such as heart disease, chronic lung disease, stroke, cancer, chronic kidney disease, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. We've seen increases in the prevalence of these chronic conditions over the past few decades, and these echo the increases we've seen in BMI and obesity prevalence. In particular, the most recent data illustrate that six in 10 adults have at least one of these chronic diseases, and four in 10 adults have two or more of these chronic diseases. So overall, the data and information presented in this lecture illustrate that the prevalence of obesity in related chronic diseases has increased significantly over the past three decades. Most recent U.S. estimates illustrate that obesity affects significant proportions of all age groups, including 14% of two to five-year-olds, 18% of six to nine-year-olds, 21% of 10 to 19-year-olds, and 42% of adults. We also see sociodemographic disparities in the prevalence of obesity with certain groups at higher risk than others. We looked at data for racial and ethnic disparities and saw a higher prevalence of obesity for adults and children who identify as Black or Hispanic. Thank you for learning with me.